evening and in theory almost uh, happy Easter to everyone out there and welcome to In The Know brought to you by the Racing Post and uh, Coral uh, for a bit of a Thursday night to all weather uh, flat racing bonanza of a preview show as we've got Lingfield, Chelmsford and of course the All Weather Championship Finals at Newcastle uh, on Friday tomorrow. The uh, the weather is scorching hot, or at least it is uh, down in uh, in London where the Racing Post studio is situated uh, and the uh, uh, runners are, are ready and raring to go for uh, some valuable races. Over uh, half a million quid to the winners on the table up at uh, Newcastle tomorrow uh, and uh, a few French Raiders, some uh, uh, top yards and some improving uh, horses to get stuck into as well. Uh, this is live and interactive for the next hour or so. Uh, so uh, please uh, welcome to the uh, the first flat preview show of the season and do get your thoughts uh, and selections through on that chat box. It seems like only yesterday we were discussing who would win the, uh, the Grand National but we're having to completely change tack uh, and get stuck in uh, to some flat action. Uh, albeit we have been all week of course uh, with the, the Craven meeting at Newmarket throwing up plenty of of mouth-watering clues going forward. Uh, we might see, potentially, given that the uh, meeting has switched to Newcastle, a few Ascot clues. Uh, a nice uh, uh, stiff uh, straight mile, for example, will be perfect for horses uh, going uh, uh, for the, uh, the big summer meeting in June. Uh, but uh, uh, before all that, let's hopefully find a winner or two on Friday's cards. Like I said, it's not just me uh, taking you through the cards. Uh, we uh, will have your help at home, of course, uh, and we will also have the help of our pundits who have uh, uh, started looking at... Uh, um, uh, at Tapper to Sire stats after uh, looking at, uh, at st the, the, the stamina indexes of uh, three mile chasers. So uh, it's going to be a very different uh, show indeed, I feel, uh, for this, uh, this weekend's all weather action. Uh, but uh, as ever, we do have two pundits for all seasons to give us our selections. And as it's Easter, uh, it's not only our Lord Jesus Christ that's occasionally gone disappearing uh, on a Friday only to come back uh, on a Sunday. Uh, our pundit in the studio as well, Paul Keeley, has had a couple of weekends like that in his time, haven't you, my good man? Absolutely, yes. But I didn't remember what I did beforehand. No. Uh, <laughs> but uh, and we're, 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 there's a, there'll, there'll be a book written about you one day, I'm sure. Uh, yeah, I don't know who's going to write it, though. Yeah? yeah I mean, I'm, I'm happy to, I'm happy to apply. Have a go, yeah. Yeah. Uh, X-rated top shelf. <laughs> I mean, if you like. Uh, so yeah, I don't think so. So about warts and all. Uh, yeah, I've taken an extra day off to study these all weather cars. Because yeah, yeah. you know me, I've watched a single all weather race for the entire winter. So yeah. you know, so I wasn't tipping in the racing post today because yesterday I was spending all day looking at the all weather cards rather than uh, studying Thursday. So I have done my own work. There you go. We do our best. Well, that's sort of the uh, that's the sort of dedication we need in the uh, in the studio <laughs> as well. Uh, Tom Siegel at uh, at home, uh, and uh, you can't see the the bank of screens uh, in front of Tom in that uh, at office, but he's got one for every single meeting, all weather jumps, uh, you name it. Uh, Tom <laughs> Siegel has uh, has got notes on it. Uh, good evening to you, Tom, and, and happy Easter. Thank you very much, Ross. Yeah, I love the all weather. Nothing like a good all weather race for me. So very much looking forward to. Where are we? Lingfield, Chelmsford, Newcastle, all that sort of stuff tomorrow. Yeah. Can't wait. Oh, absolutely, and uh, we're over to up to uh, Newcastle in the uh, the northeast, of course. And uh, there's some uh, there's some hefty lumps of cash on the table for the winners. Yeah, absolutely, great card, isn't it? Lots of good racing, lots of good horses. Expecting uh, Carl Burke to have a good good day. I think he's just had the winner of the listed race at Bath as well, so his horses are running well. I think he's got loads of good chance. I think he's got eight runners across the two or three meetings and. I'm hoping he'll have a good day. Yeah, his, uh, his horses are going very well indeed. Are you? Uh, is this your first switch to flat mode then, uh, uh, Tom? Have you uh, have you been approaching Newmarket this week? All oh, right, yeah, I've had a few winners. Quite surprising, quite surprising. Uh, yeah, like the uh, I had the uh, double or bubble and Iden today and a few others. So yeah, so it's it's gone all right so far. Yeah. Oh, it's quite surprising because I'm normally rubbish at. Uh, the start of each season. Well, there you go. Uh, it's uh, you can teach a, an old uh, dog new tricks. Um, do we have? We, we've got a your uh, your canine um, compatriot in the uh, on the show tonight. Uh, she's here today. Yeah, there she is. Okay. Yeah. Lovely stuff. Well, we, I mean, how can we, how can we fail uh, with uh, with that sort of support? Uh, Simon Clare is uh, is joining us as uh, as well. We had David Stevens for Aintree uh, and Simon Clare. Are you uh, are you off to Newcastle, Simon? 
Yeah, I am actually. I'm flying up in the morning. I'm doing a day trip. I've got a, a nine o'clock flight in the morning, then got an eight forty back from Newcastle tomorrow night. So I will be there. We're sponsoring three of the races, and uh, um, I mean, it's you know, it's it, it's the, this is the tenth year of the All Weather Series Championships and this final on Good Friday. Um, and of course, before that, there was no racing on Good Friday, and the All Weather Flat season from October right the way through to March was just you know there was no purpose to it. It was basically there as an insurance product. Uh, with a couple of big days, you know, the Winter Derby, the Winter Derby trial, but apart, so, you know, it, it was in its inception 10 years ago, you know, pretty, well, really radical. It allowed racing to take place on Good Friday, and now it's celebrating its 10th birthday, and I feel really old. I can remember launching it with the with, with Ark. Well, there you go. Maybe you should, I'm disappointed you're flying, Simon. You could have got, uh, you know, you could have got six cans on the train up to Newcastle. <laughs> it's uh, going to be perfect for you. <laughs> Yes, exactly. No, I just, I just, I've got to say, Paul Keeley's shirt, that's proper as a proper celebration of spring arriving, isn't it? I'm really right. impressed by that. Oh, look at it. Pink, yeah. blue, beautiful. Yeah. You've found nice that. sunny day today. So, <laughs> say again. What did you say? I've been selling some ice creams with the nice dry pecan. I'm not sure it's the ice creams. I think you've actually been, um, you can buy uh, shares in Paul Keeley if you go to Middle and Park Racing. <laughs> <laughs> judging by those uh, by those silks so um uh, yeah well uh, a couple of apologies by the way before we uh, before we, uh, we we get stuck into it uh, not for anything that keels has done this time uh, but uh, we're having uh, graphics problems they have uh, turned translucent uh, so we will not be having graphics for the uh, for the show uh, uh, tonight uh, and and also we ended up uh, starting a little bit late as well because uh, of that uh, problem but our uh, producers have been squirreling away uh, with those graphics uh, but unfortunately uh, it does look like a, a photo negative if you stick them up, which is uh, not necessarily ideal. So um, uh, Tom Siegel's going to have to get the old uh, the old race card out uh, uh, before race, uh, before referring to those prices. And if I am looking down at my computer a lot, it's because of that. So uh, uh, let's get stuck in there. Uh, off to Newcastle we go um, for uh, for the uh, the All Weather Championships tomorrow. Uh, we've got uh, we've got seven races, but uh, we're going to preview uh, preview six of them. Uh, starting off uh, with the uh, the two o'clock at uh, Newcastle tomorrow, uh, seven to seven thousand three hundred and ten pounds uh, for the majority of the uh, the races uh, tomorrow, uh, and the all weather mile championships conditions stakes uh, starts off uh, at uh, two o'clock tomorrow uh, with my Oberon heading the betting for William Haggis and Tom Marquand at two to one, uh, Latte Harty thirteen to two, seven to one Amal Car, fifteen to two San Andreas, eight to one Tempest, uh, nine to one Fort Payne. Uh, and uh, it is uh, 10 to 1 bless him and 11 to 1 bar those. Quite a big feel for the the first race uh, or that we're going to preview at Newcastle tomorrow. Paul Keeley. Um, and <coughs> the, uh, I guess a bit of a feature of the All Weather Championships in general over the last few years is um, y there is often one standout clear horse in every single race. It's got five or six pounds on everything else. And then a lot of horses hoping to try and pick up the pieces and that's what we've got here with uh, with my own yeah well it's often the case you get these horses to come over and they have got that gap on something else but they've got that gap on turf form mm. like, you know in this case of my own he is you know comfortably the best of these if he translates it all uh, all the way to all weather he was six in the dubai turf last time really good one behind lord north now he's had one run on the all weather and that was that was um uh, it, his penultimate outing so he does handle it he won but he only beat a horse rated 96, who's still rated 96 after two more runs and getting beaten in handicap. So, you know, uh, whether you can put a big figure on that piece of form, I'm not sure. It was after a break, and it was obviously a prep for going to Dubai, so he could be better than that. But he had to work hard enough to win that race, and he's facing better horses now than he is then. So I was just temp tempted just to take him on. I, I, I can fully see the case for him being different class. But I thought Amil Carr was quite interesting. Uh, uh, for the bodies, um, come from, um, uh, came over, uh, ran at Wolverhampton last time and, and was quite eye catching, a bit too keen uh, in the early stages. We still saw out the race really well. Uh, he won a good race um, the time before, um, just sort of running career bests on, the, on, on all weather surfaces. Uh, and uh, Andrea, Andrea Adzani rode him at Wolverhampton. It looks very much like he's been sort of laid out for this. Um, French-based horses, I think they've won, they've won five times. They've won you know, five races at these championships over the last few years. Uh, and I just thought he was likely to run well if, the, if there's a strong enough pace. And there are some of the, some of the outsiders uh, do tend to go forward. Yeah, um, and uh, especially well, that should, uh, uh, in theory, set it up for the closes, as it tends to do at uh, Newcastle. Uh, it is uh, a bit Ascot-like, isn't it, Tom, in the sense that um, the uh, the front runners do tend to, to stop a furlong out and the closers uh, 
uh, come uh, come late and fast, um, often down this uh, this near side rail. Um, but yeah, my Oberon is, um, and we said clearly the most talented horse in the uh, the race. But um, he's had good opportunities in the past, and he's thrown them away. Um, are you going with class, or are you are you hoping something could uh, take a chance and, and land a, a big pot here? Uh, it's a good question. I, 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 going back to your first point about the, the track and the, the way it rides, I always think that's quite an interesting thing. I think straight mile tracks are much, much harder to ride than round ones because you actually don't know when, jockeys don't know when to start racing. And I think like at Ascot and like at Newcastle, they often go for home way too soon on a round track. You come into the straight, got two furlongs to go, you know what you're doing. I think some of these tracks jockeys tend to get racing too soon and therefore that's why I think some sometimes it's best to be on hold up horses that's looked to be the case at Newcastle I have to admit I'm you know at this stage of the season I can get confused by which which uh, all weather tracks which because you're not quite you know you're not quite in the mode but my, my understanding of Newcastle is that it's quite hard to make the running therefore what that means about this race I don't know I understand Keels' point about Amalcar totally Looks like, I mean, these French horses have a very good record in these races. I think he'll be get the race run to suit. The problem is, my Oberon is totally different class on his last run, isn't he? But he's not very consistent. He throws he throws bad ones in, good ones in. Do I want to back him at two to one when he can throw in a, you know, it's one of those, it's a nightmare race. If you back, if you if you take on my Oberon, he wins by five lengths. And if you don't, and if you back him, he, he blows out the water. So it's not a race I'm going to get too involved in. But I do understand the, uh, the, the, uh, Amil car uh, um, uh, argument heels makes there, and he'd probably be my each way selection in the race. But it's uh, it's a, it's a very tricky start for all those punting at Newcastle, where we it's the first race anyway. So it's the second race. It's not that <laughs> tricky a start. It's the trickiest second race. <laughs> yeah, and of course, the, uh, the first race is over a, a mile as well, so you get a little bit of a pointer. All, uh, admittedly, it's a much smaller field in that uh, that opener. Uh, but yeah, my over on the uh, the favourite animal car uh, definitely with a chance. Other horses we have to mention: Latte Hearty, I think, um, looks wildly impressive uh, in two starts at Kempton. And then if you watch that Wolverhampton race back, um, uh, Safi Osborne uh, pretty much got caught three wide throughout the entire race. So you can stick a complete line through that. Uh, I think Latte Hearty is very interesting, albeit that one box. Uh, is uh, is not necessarily the best place to be stuck on the uh, the wing at uh, Newcastle. Uh, I wouldn't entirely rule out, gents, a, a big run from Air Harbour, um, who uh, also didn't have a, a hope of getting home racing keenly at Wolverhampton last time out, but was only a quarter of a length behind my Oberon at uh, Sutherland. is twenty five to one and does have course uh, form here at Newcastle. So um, I thought Air Harbour might be worth a crack because I think we've got an extra place each way. Um, Simon, is that right? Yes, I'm glad you've asked for that. Uh, we have places, I'll tell you now. Um, yes, paying four <laughs> places instead of three. <laughs> I mean, it's a good job we did, isn't it? Because that, that, oh, that, that pause would have been uh, a real letdown. I know, I know. I was thinking, please be right, Ross, please be right. But yeah, no, we have got four places instead of three, which I think, given there is a short price favourite in the field, is a, is definitely an, at least an encouragement to have a play if you don't want to bet the favourite, I suppose, because you've got those extra three places, even if he was to win. Um, quite interesting, the money is coming from those two to one. It was five to two earlier. It was nine to four when I was doing my prep earlier. He's now two to one. A lot of confidence behind him, uh, ridden by Tom Marcond. And Tom's wife, Polly, is the other horse for money, or, or the jockey for money, I should say. Tempus has been back from eight uh, from tens into eights. Uh, so those are the two for money. I thought, bless him. I know he's getting on a bit. He's eight years old, but his Newcastle record's excellent. He's won two and come second from his three starts there. Um, and, uh, you know, he's always capable of running a big race at a big price at 10 to 1. Uh, but, yeah, very, yeah, quite a competitive. But behind the favourite, it's quite competitive to try and work out who might get placed. And then it's just a question of whether you think the favourite, favourite's class is going to be uh, translated to this surface. So, yeah, it's a tricky one. Yeah. Okay then. Uh, but we are uh, we're taking a chance with uh, with Amilcar. Is that correct, Paul Keeley? Yeah, I will go with Amilcar. Okay. And uh, and uh, and Tom, are you in the uh, in the van with Amilcar? Yeah. And there I was thinking I was the least prepared man on the on the panel, and then Simon comes up. <laughs> Thanks, my friend. I let I leave the extra places to Ross. Always have. Always yeah. have. But but still um, but still doubted me when I said it. So <laughs> I know I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure. I thought really in this race, what are they doing? Yeah, there uh, you go. Uh, you, think, the, the, think... the the traders are th uh, throw curveballs left, right, and centre, Simon. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Look, I should mention there is actually a uh, in the know price booster. Archie Watson. There's a couple of runners here. The one that's been back Tempus 
and Imperial Sands, eight to one and eleven to one. And we've got if you just fancy Watson to win this race with either, it's six to one from five to one. For what it's worth, I think my Oberon, just with that huge sort of uh, ratings advantage, odds against at two to one. I'd hopefully maybe get a bit bigger, bigger tomorrow morning. Thought he he might be worth the bet actually. And bless him each way would probably be my my, uh, my second bet. OK, very well. Uh, I'll go for Air Harbour with four places at uh, 25 mm. to 1 each way for the, the Michael Appleby stable. Uh, moving on, 2.35 at uh, Newcastle up next. The uh, the all-weather sprint championships condition stakes again. £77,310 on the table. That £10, I'm sure, uh, will be making all the difference. Uh, and uh, as you would expect, it is absolutely wide open, this race. Uh, a really good uh, uh, renewal of this contest. And the uh, uh, the all-weather specialist, Eshtalab, is, uh, is top of the betting, narrowly, 9 to too, although there is quite a bit of money for Spy Catcher, who's uh, challenging him for, for favouritism as well. Harry's Bar eight to one with Volatile Analyst. Uh, Judicial is eleven to one with Soldiers Minute and Venturous. Uh, Edrock is twelve to one. Good effort, twelve to one. Fourteens uh, and bigger the rest here uh, for this uh, fourteen runner race, uh, where we do have a fifth of the odds. One, two, three, four. Uh, in this uh, the conditions uh, race. But uh, um, you were talking about Carl Burke at the start of the, uh, the show, Tom, uh, and I noticed the, uh, the price of Spycatcher uh, is collapsing, uh, and I think you might have something to do with, uh, with that um, because, uh, yeah, he's, uh, he's clearly a talented horse. Yard are in form. Nice draw as well. You, uh, you fancy Spycatcher? Yeah, I do, yeah. Yeah, I do. I like Spycatcher. Um, last year he split, didn't he? Creative Force and Tactical and Enlisted Race at... Uh, Newbury, and then he ran third in a group race as well. But he was doing everything on the wrong way around last year. He was pulling too hard. He was too keen. Now, I think what they've done is they, they've maybe oversettled him because he can be slow from the gates, and that would be a problem here, especially if Edgedalark gets uh, free on the lead because he's clearly uh, a really good all-weather specialist who's got a bit, a bit in hand on ratings. Uh, I think I think they're going to uh, the race is going to involve under under the stance rail. I'm I'm not a I, I'm, normally I don't really worry about the draw. Uh, at Newcastle, but I think it's going to involve under the stand rail with Edge to Love. The key to him is whether he gets uh, gets it easy on the front with Lord of the Lodge is drawn on the other side, good efforts on the uh, sort of in the middle area. And I just thought that if they go too hard, it's going to set it up for a finisher. And Spycatcher was wildly impressive last time at Linkfield. He had no chance. He was squeezed out from the start in a good race uh, where he, uh, Lord of the Lodge was second. And he came flying down the outside and picked him up. And I just thought that He's got a group two entry in the Duke of York. I could just see him being a classier, classier type of horse than these going forward. Whether he's as classy as Edge Delab on the all-weather is the question. Uh, when I was looking at the race earlier, he was a much bigger price than Edge Delab. I see they're about the same price now, which uh, obviously changes dynamics for punters a little bit. But uh, earlier in the day, it was, it was all about spy catch for me because I thought the race was going to set up perfectly for him. I thought they were going to go really hard and it was going to shoot a strong, a strong stare, a strong finisher. Of which Spycatcher is undoubtedly one. Yeah, the uh, yeah high stalls do have an excellent record. I was having a look. I mean, if you just take the highest stall from uh, sort of eight to fourteen runners at Newcastle, uh, it's won thirteen percent of those races compared to the lowest as eight percent, and it places thirty one percent of the time. So it is often unfolding down this uh, near side rail, as it did when Eshtalab won uh, here uh, about this time last year. I think it was uh, um, uh, off a much lower mark, but has clearly improved since then. Uh, and who did Eshtalab beat? On that occasion at this uh, track, well, who else but Mr. Mile Fab Mondamage. Mondamage, yeah. there he is. There the first go. mention Mile of Mondamage for the season. Love that horse. There we go. But, yes, Tom, I mean, Tom's I, just throwing himself out the window. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, uh, I think Edge Tillab is turning into a top class winter. Mm. And, you know, I can understand, I can certainly under, understand the case of Spycatcher. It wouldn't surprise me. If it's a case of whether he hangs on or spy catcher gets to him, but you know, last year it was Northumberland Plate Day. I think it wasn't he won last year, and it was uh, he was three off the rail, uh, drawn three off the rail as he is uh, tomorrow, and he got across uh, and he dominated. Now um, you, you can split in groups in Newcastle because it's quite wide. If if they don't all come over and if they race apart from each other, I think he'll just dominate that side because as we saw, spy catcher can miss the kick. Uh, and the other two, Judicial and Volatile Anna, are both happy to take a lead. Like, you know, so I think he'll get on that rail again. And you just see the way he went away again from the front. And as he did last time when he beat Tommy DeVito at Kempton, you know, he, he looks, he's been in front for a while, um, looks like he's going hard enough, and then he just goes away again. He's just, he's just improving and improving. You've got to remember that uh, by the time he turned four, he'd only had one race in his life. He was, he was Shadwell-owned originally. He was kicked out after 
uh, after winning one race for Roger Verdon at three and didn't come back till he was four. Uh, and he's just improved dramatically for Ian Williams, and he's improving dramatically again for Charlie Fellows. And I think he's going to—I I think he's going to take a lot of beating. Um, he's also in the in the Duke of York and the Greenlands and, and at, the, at the Coa. So they obviously think he is a proper group sprinter now. I think that's what he's going to turn into. Okay, National Hard then a uh, big chance. We, uh, you mentioned Volatile Analyst. Though. I, I think he's another one who's really improving. Again, he's got the highest box of all. He's perfectly positioned. Um, I thought he did really well to win at Doncaster last time out. He looked like he was going up and down on one spot. And Diligent Harry had the race won, but he, he lunged late, didn't he, to, uh, to to score? He's four from nine on a straight six furlongs as well. And I mean, he's one of those horses that you kind of think, oh, where's he come from? Then you actually look at his career, and he was fourth in the Richmond behind Golden mm. Horde as a two-year-old, and. Um, they've just kind of found the key to him over the, the past 12 months or so. But he won a big sprint at York, didn't he, at the back end of the season. And I thought that was a, 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 yeah, a really gritty success last time. Like, this track should be perfect for him. Yeah, it could easily be. It just depends on whether it, you know, it, it is set up for him. Because mm. you know, it's like we talk about you know, pacing races. I mean, it's far more important. You know, lots of people talk about horse race tracks being the sort of track that suits other horses, uh, suits hold up horses, suits front runners and all mm. that, but it's not actually true. It's how they're ridden. Uh, and if if Eshelal can get to that lead and not get taken on so much on his own, I think they're going to struggle to yeah. get past him. Just just the way he won last time. I mean, that's kind of the point you were making though, Tom, isn't it? It's not that a lot of tracks, it's if it does suit front runners, it's probably because it's it's easier, as you said, to, to get the fractions right, whether you're, yeah, whether you're yeah, going to have had or... You know, front runner winners of the Hunt Cup, for instance, like, yeah. you know what I mean? It does happen, you know, if, if, if they get it right. It's just yeah. not, uh, not as often. Mm. I mean, there's certain tracks in there that are on a pace knife edge, aren't they? I mean, look at Goodwood. You can go half a second too mm. quick and you want to be last, and you can go, you can be half a second too slow from the front and you want to be in front. I mean, it's just, it's just the way, where you, where you start racing, I think, most of the time. And I think on these straight tracks, because you have no sort of vocal, you know, Point where you yeah. where you know where you, you know where to start racing. I think they can get running too soon. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's a bit, it's, it feels a bit like you know when you, it feels a bit like driving down the M1. It's quite easy to miss your miss your junctions yeah. on because you can just you just you just focus on driving in a straight line. It's a bit. Uh, that's the only experience I have, having never ridden a horse at Newcastle. But uh, maybe it's just me, uh, Simon, that occasionally drifts off and misses the junction on the M1. But uh, there's an analogy for you. Well, I hope you're not drifting off to sleep on the M1. That'd be very dangerous. No, just daydreaming, Simon. Just daydreaming. <laughs> I, know, I know, on autopilot. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know. I do know the feeling as you uh, drive past service station after service station, and get where you are. Um, yeah, Etchlab. Uh, is it Etchlab? Uh, et, 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 I should pronounce it properly. Just thought it was interesting. That was his uh, to, to Paul's point. You know, that was his best ever RPR last time when he won at Kempton. Uh, three really good runs actually in Group Race and Listed Race at Maidan. He does look to be suddenly in a really sort of rich vein of form. But his second best ever RPR was at Newcastle uh, when he won. So that gives, oh no, in fact, he was second. Yeah, no, he, was, he won, didn't he, over course of distance. So um, he's very solid, but Spy Catcher has been well back. That's the Seagull factor. Um, the horse I thought I'd just throw, I thought there's, there's quite an interesting French challenge across the card. There's six French trained runners racing at Newcastle. Um, and Boutemont, I think, is one of the more interesting ones. He's 14 to one, but he's got uh, two really good, uh, runs over six and a half furlongs, who wins over six and a half furlongs. So he, he stays and he sits just behind the pace. That was a good race he ran in last time when he won. And I, I just thought that, that, you know, he probably is, might, might represent a bit of value. You're guessing a little bit on how the form correlates, but just trying to look at something maybe which should just sit just behind the pace, drawn 10. Um, I think he could be a bit of value at 14s. Okay. Uh, and uh, the horse that he beat last time, I also has form tied in with Amilcar. And uh, that horse they both beat was Midlife Crisis, which seems apt. Uh, I feel, uh, but uh, the uh, <laughs> the French uh, speak for yourself. <laughs> uh, yeah, Butamont uh, drawn in ten as well should go quite, quite well. Uh, and uh, just a uh, shout out for for people uh, at, uh, watching at home. Of course, Trevor Meeks uh, has uh, has a little bit on on Mondamedge uh, and Venturous, uh, as has Baked Patatas is going with Venturous each way as well. Uh, and Sharp Fitness Look. Who, uh, who will not be having any baked potatoes is going for volatile analyst 91 each way as well. Lord of the Lodge front runner decent bets says Neil Dawkins, uh, although not necessarily based on what we've been talking about uh, on uh, the the card at Newcastle. Okay, uh, the sprints uh, then. To, Tom, what wins? Uh, spy catcher, hopefully. But okay. I am very worried that if Edge Delab gets, as Kiel says, gets it easy on the front, then he'll be really hard. Okay, uh, and you're going with Edge Delab? Yeah. 
Yeah, as long as he does get it really easy on the front. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah fair enough. One of them too, isn't it? Okay, and I'll go for volatile <laughs> analysts. So that's uh, 12, 13, and 15 for the draws. Box them up, uh, and judicial will probably pop up out of nowhere. Uh, Simon? Yeah, boot them on for me. I'm a big judicial fan, actually. I thought it uh, ran well last time and runs the track well. So I thought, yeah, judicial. But uh, boot them on for me. I should just say that uh, there are six French trained uh, horses across the car. That's one of our. In the no specials, there's a, 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 a horse in the barrow does implementation, a couple in the two o'clock Fort Payne and Amil car. We've got a couple to come after this race, but we're offering seven to four, a French train winner, which was six to five. So that's our in the no special. I thought I'd pop that in here. So, uh, a French train winner at all? At all, at Newcastle, anyway. If you have, so a French, just one, one or more French train winners on the card, seven to four. Lovely stuff. There we go. Uh, okay, so uh, yeah, just uh, just back that and, uh, and hope that one of them pops up. Um, okay, uh, moving on then. Uh, another six furlong race on the agenda next. Uh, the ten past uh, three at, uh, at Newcastle uh, is uh, worth seventy-seven thousand three hundred and ten pounds to the uh, the winner. Uh, and Carl Burke could well have a another big chance here uh, with uh, with course winner El Caballo, who uh, has been in fantastic form and heads the betting at odds of two to one. Although Tiber Flow has been heavily backed and uh, is uh, challenging for joint favouritism as well. Space Cowboy. Uh, is uh, is five to one, eight to one. Kaboo, uh, fourteen to one. My Dubawi, Super Carly, eighteens. Golden Warrior, twenties. With Wyvern, twenty fives. Anaf and Showmaker uh, for the uh, quietly informed Ishmael Mohammed is the fifty to one outsider of the bunch. Uh, just the three places to aim for uh, here. Uh, but uh, El Caballo, uh, we were talking about one clear horse in every race uh, standing out, and uh, he gets the nod here. Eight hundred and seven, four pounds clear uh, of Space Cowboy, and the only horse to beat. El Caballo uh, is the very, very uh, classy Armour, of course, who was Group 1 class last year and was a horse that you followed. Uh, Armour, wasn't he, uh, Keels, on the Yeah, the back to him at Goodwood. Yeah. 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 And, um, um, and El Caballo, since that very creditable debut, has, um, has done very little wrong, albeit he does have a lot of pace rivals today. Well, he does, yeah. There's, yeah, there's plenty of pace rivals. It all depends on where Space Cowboy's gone from the front. I actually like Space Cowboy. I, th I think he's the bet in here at the, at the, at the prices. I know, I know the stable really like him. I thought he, you know, I thought he was just held together and, you know, not asked to do too much uh, last time. One with a lot more in hand than it looked. Uh, the funny thing is, that, you know, punters and racing post ratings, it has to be said, are in wild disagreement with the uh, BHA assessor over the chances of Tiber Flow because if this was a handicap, he'd be getting thirteen pound off El Caballo and a, and a nine pound off Space Cowboy. But his joint favourite, racing post ratings, rates him the same uh, as El Caballo. So uh, yeah, he's done his winning. Easily in in very small fields, um, very hard to put a figure on him. I suppose it is a different difficult horse to handicap, but he's been very very uh, well backed, and, and and because of that move in the market, I think Space Cowboy has become quite a decent price. Mm. Uh, but it's, it's it's not a race you can be massively confident about. No, yeah, it is. I mean, because because there's, there's so much course form here, isn't mm. there? Um, there, there? There's there's multiple winners. You've got. Uh, like the Spencer horse uh, coming off the uh, the back of a, a break in the shape of Space Cowboy, and even those at bigger prices, because it, like I said, if Tiber flows a two to one shot, um, rated ninety four, then the, there's some horses who are 14, 16, 20 to one who who, who look wildly. Yeah, overpriced. exactly. I mean, it all depends on whether you know on who's right. Uh, you know, when it comes to you know, punters obviously think he's an awful lot better than ninety four because I mean, what price would he be if this was a handicap and he was getting thirteen pound mm. off the off the current joint five. Okay, um, time to flow though. Uh, heavily backed uh, into into two to one joint favourites. Uh, Tom, uh, do you uh, believe in that racing post rating or that official rating for time to flow? Uh, I don't know. Ratings aren't my thing. What I do think though is that he's going to have the race set up for him because I think there's tons of pace on in this race. I think of all the races, talking about the pace in the last race, there's about three or four of these, and there's only uh, ten runners that really like to to get on with things. I think Tiger Flow. Tiber flow is probably better over a bit further, maybe seven furlongs. I think a stiff six here will, will suit him perfectly. So I get why there's money for him. Uh, whether I'd back him at two to one, given, given that he has to improve, I'm more in the uh, official ratings camp than the, the, the other guys. I, I, I don't know. I think he's plenty short enough now. But when I was looking at the race earlier, I thought he was the most likely winner because I thought they might set the race up for him. But Two to one's plenty short enough. I did think the other car, but Kabu had a little bit of an each way chance as well. Uh, he hung all over the track last time at Lingfield, but he had won three before that. He loves the all weather. Uh, I'm a big, big fan of his jockey, Danny Tudho. I think he's one of the best jockeys in the around these days. And I could see him going well, but uh, uh, you know, 
the favourite El Caballo's done nothing. You know, it's that old saying, he's done nothing wrong. I hate saying it, but it's true. He's he's literally he's literally could be very very classy. So I get he's the one to beat. When they were earlier in the week, Ty for River was a bigger price. He was going to be the selection, but now he's the same price. I think I'll leave that one to the. Uh, to the experts to work out that the, the veteran boys will sort that out five minutes before the off. But at the moment, it's Tiber River for me. Okay. Um, Tiber um, Flow. Uh, Tiber it, Flow. Yeah. You're calling it Tiber. Sorry. That's all right. That's, that's absolutely fine. Uh, William Haggis, of course. I mean, that's that's got to be a part, a, a huge part of this price. Isn't it? Just the respect for the. Yeah, of course. If an unbeaten horse trained by William Haggis, that's the. Uh, you know, a lot of people are jumping on board that. I'd imagine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, other horses just to throw into, or one more horse just to throw into, I thought was a little bit interesting. Again, he has a bit to find, but then so did uh, so did Tyler Flo. But um, Wyvern for, for Stuart Williams and Marco Giani um, came from the back at Wolverhampton last time out in a, in a speed figure that was much better than it should have been for the grade. And again, you start to look at this race, and there is a potential that Al Caballo, maybe even Tyler Flo, maybe even Space Cowboy, maybe My Dabawi, there could be four. Uh, front runners at the very least that can mm. send it up for a closer. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, yeah, could be possible. Marco Gianni is a good judge of pace as well. He's been riding well. Had a winner today, didn't he? So, yeah. I mean, it yeah. Went, he when isn't he riding well? He's, mm. he's, yeah. he's phenomenal, yeah, yeah, yeah. isn't he? Very good. Yeah. Um, yeah, he timed uh, coast to perfection at uh, Newmarket this afternoon. Uh, but yeah, the, the the money piling in for the the Haggis horse, uh, Simon. Um, what price did you open up with this? Because it's, uh, I mean, it was at least halved in price. Yeah, it's been a big move. It's been a big move in the last sort of couple of hours because when I was looking at the race, it was 13 to 8 El Caballo and 3 to 1 type of flow. That was only a couple of hours ago. And uh, yeah, been in the last sort of hour or so, a lot of money's come for him. 2 to 1 now, uh, went 3 to 1, 5 to 2 to 1, joint favourites. Funny enough, we were, we were going to have a price boost on El Caballo to make it 2 to 1 from 13 to 8. And now it's just 2 to 1 generally. So scratch that one. <laughs> um, but yeah, he's been really, he typed flow really well back. Bits of money for Kabu, I've seen elsewhere, sort of shortened into sevens. We're still eight. Um, and uh, yeah, it's a tricky race. Uh, so, I mean, it's, I think the interesting thing is there's so much pace on. This is the horse type of flow who's been pretty much slowly away at all three uh, of his starts. So he'll be sitting in behind, uh, you know, the, the, the pace up front. It's then a question of how good he is and whether he can sort of cut down all the horses in front of him. But um, as you say, the William Haggis factor, probably a big play there. Okay, uh, there we go. Um, someone's uh, unplugged the, uh, the screen there for, uh, for Simon, but um, <laughs> we, uh, we got it in the end. Uh, but uh, yeah, so uh, quite a, a competitive little race, in particular because of the money for Tyber Flow for William Haggis and Tom Monquand, uh, but El Caballo uh, was uh, quite comfortably the, the clear uh, favourite uh, and um, should be the, the one to beat for Cobb. But, but uh, Paul Keeley, how are you, how are you yeah, playing this one? I'd probably have a couple of quid on Space Cat, but I think it's a little bit overpriced now. I think it's very promising. Okay, uh, and it is of course uh, the return of the Space Cowboy after 178 days off the track. Uh, Tom Siegel, do you mean a quiet fan? Uh, not really. No, not really. I'm not sure who not is to be fair, but. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, um, what's the, the uh, what's the bet? Well, it would have been Tiber Flow uh, earlier in the day, round two to one. I'm and if I'm allowed to, I'm going to take a pass on this one and sit out. But he's the one I think might win. Okay. Uh, any 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 greyhound opinions? Bolly, what do you reckon? No, not interested in this one. <laughs> Camel Camel shy. Not bothered at all. <laughs> uh, Simon Clare. Well, look, I'm just I might take a little bit of flyer on Super Cali. Just again, another one of these French trained horses um, was running on sort of soft ground and heavy ground on the turf last season as a two year old, which it always is obviously over in France. Got on the all weather, ran a couple of okay races at the back end of the last term, but then has been ridden with a bit more restraint uh, on both starts this year. Won them both narrowly, and the form maybe not doesn't look quite good enough. But again, he probably a horse would be sitting behind the speed, um, and uh, you know, I, I, at eighteen to one, they've, they've come on. They haven't come over here for the day out, have they? So. Uh, I thought we might be worth a few quid each way. I don't know. I don't know if you've been out on a Friday night in Newcastle, <laughs> Simon, but uh, maybe they have. Maybe they have come out for the day out or the night out. Good point. Good point. We'll find out tomorrow. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you tell me. You tell me when you're flying up there. So, uh, OK, I'll take a chance with uh, with Wyvern as well for, for Stuart Williams and uh, Marco Gianni. Uh, uh, maybe at least uh, run on into a place from the, uh, the back at decent odds. Uh, and uh, judicial uh, uh, for Chris O. Uh, he's, uh, he's a race behind, or two races behind at this rate. Uh, Space Cowboy for Sharp Fitness Look. Uh, Kaboo, says uh, Baked Patatas. Uh, so uh, good luck with uh, with all your selections in that uh, uh, that three year old uh, sprint set tomorrow, which was won, of course, by Diligent Harry uh, last year, uh, and uh, he uh, has some form tied in with Volatile Analyst 
in the previous race. So it's all, it's all starting to work out at uh, Newcastle as we uh, we move on uh, seven furlongs the distance here for the, the Phillies and Mares uh, Championships Condition Stakes uh, you guessed it £77,310 to the winner uh, uh, unfortunately though just the seven runners and uh, a very similar uh, lineup as we were saying to the uh, the other races in that there is one horse who is dropping down uh, from uh, from warmer races over the uh, the summer and the autumn uh, and is the uh, the clear favourite in the shape of Highfield Princess for John Quinn and Jason Hart currently around the 13 to 8 mark uh, International Angel is two to one, seven to one, arousing. Uh, Forvet is eight to one, rising star eight to one at uh, Catois twenties, and Dubai Lady is the forty to one outsider of the bunch. And uh, the uh, the word honest and genuine gets bandied about probably a little bit too much for horses who just uh, pop out in front and plug on at one pace, uh, Tom. But uh, Highfield Princess. I mean, it's been a long time since this horse ran a uh, run a bad race. She ran an absolute cracker in Group One company, of course, behind Creative Force. Um, but she has been banging her uh, head against the brick wall in terms of win purposes. She uh, she's been trying various different trips, varying different various different tracks. But uh, clearly, this is a, a golden opportunity for her to bounce back to winning ways. Yeah, I think so. I mean, she was, the first two runs of the season on the all weather. I was really disappointed with her because I thought she was she probably should have won them both. I thought she was better than the horses she was running against. Well, maybe not the second time. That's probably harsh. In the Wolverhampton listed race, won by Tinker Toy. But I still thought she should have run better. She was really disappointing, I thought, at Chelmsford. But I loved her run last time, back at five furlongs at Wolverhampton. I thought that was a real good step forward. Uh, whether that will be the perfect prep for this, I don't know. But I'm a big fan of hers. And uh, this is not a great race. Arousing, who I was really impressed with two starts ago, went completely bonkers last time, didn't she? Mm. And did absolutely everything wrong. Otherwise, I would have given her a chance. But uh, the obviously other one, and I think she might even be shading favourites with some places now, is international, whatever she's called, Jane Chapel Hyams, Philly. International who Angel. Yeah. International Angel. It was really impressive here two starts ago. You can throw out the Wolverhampton run last time. I think she's obviously best on a straight track, and she was drawn wide, and she went wide, and she just everything went wrong. So uh, I, th I, I think it's between the two. If Highland Princess gets easy off the front, I think she, she she'll win. But she is drawn one on the outside. Whether she, I mean, it's only a small field, but she'll she maybe have the pace to come across. But I prefer International Angel myself. I just think she's she's got the solid recent form. Uh, throw out that that Wolverhampton run. But once again, it's a it's a it's a coin cost for coin cost a coin. <laughs> a point toss for me. So I, I probably won't be betting, but I, I slightly prefer International Angel. That's all right. Uh, we'll, we'll forgive you that one, uh, <laughs> Tom Siegel. Uh, do you want to uh, yeah, do you want to, do you want to toy cost on this one, isn't Paul? This an example of how ridiculously obsessed trainers and owners are with black type, which of which yep. this doesn't have any. You know, imagine if this race, which is seventy-seven grand to the winner, if this race was worth thirty-five grand to winner, but carried listed status, there would be yep. twelve runners. All of them would be better than the third highest rated in here. Well, I mean, uh, it was. Know, I mean, it's just—it's it's absolutely bonkers. I mean, the connections of the front two must be pinching themselves, yeah. thinking we can run. This is a gimme. This is a toss-up between us two, effectively. Well, They're, the, well, know, the race they ran in was the Lady Wolf Runner Stakes, yeah. wasn't it? Which was worth thirty-two thousand to the winner, had ten runners, yeah, and exactly. they finished fifth and seventh. Yeah, so. and they were nine to one and uh, and whatever, and now they're thirteen to eight and two to one, and a race worth seventy-seven grand. But what are these people doing? I mean, you know, what I mean, there's got to be so many fillies. It yeah. could be qualified for this race to run for seventy-seven grand, and you know I, I, I just you know pull what's left of my hair out when I look at it. Why are you so <laughs> obsessed with black type? Like, you know, it's not like people can't read a form book anymore. They can go online and find out exactly what the form is worth. Mm. So, anyway, it's between these two. I like Highfield Princess. I do think she's tough. She's been, you know, she's had loads and loads of uh, of tough races. I think she might get to dominate. Um, I'm not gonna, you know, it's not my sort of bet, but I think she, I think she's the most likely winner. Okay, uh, Highfield Princess then uh, for for Keels. Um, I'm tempted to, to to make international. Oh, the graphics are back! What a world! Oh Look God, at that! Wow. Beautifully <laughs> done, producers. There we go. Uh, yeah, we're nearly done, are we? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, only uh, only took uh, Tom Siegel to uh, uh, Toyn and it was uh, it was sorted, wasn't it? Um, but uh, yeah, I was tempted to make International Angel the uh, the nap tomorrow. Um, uh, like I said, that Wolverhampton run. I mean, you've just like you said, Tom. I mean, shocking position throughout. Uh, gave away uh, uh, just just ha basically one of those races where you look back and you think absolutely no chance. But I, I agree. I thought it was really impressive on its penultimate start. Uh, really like the jockey. Really like the trainer. 
and um, I think Highfield Princess could potentially be there to be shot at given the, uh, the track. So um, International Angel at two to one is probably a, a fair bet in my opinion in a, what looks a two horse race. Um, Simon Clare, unless you've got something else up your, uh, your sleeve and there might be a, a three or a four horse race potentially. Well, we're going three places rather than two in this seven-runner race, you see? Back up to speed. There we go. Um, Lovely stuff. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> <laughs> With the graphics. Um, International Angel has been the best backed or better backed uh, in the last hour or so. She's now two to one. She was nine to four. Highfield Princess, 13 to eight. I think, as you already pointed out, Highfield Princess has run eight, start, eight times without winning, albeit well. International Angel in her last seven starts, all over seven furlongs. Uh, only got beat last time out when nothing went right for her and she, and she won her previous six. So she is a absolutely banging form. Um, so of the two, she'd certainly be, uh, be the one I would, uh, would favour. But, uh, you know, with that extra place, you could always try and find something at a bigger price. I tried very hard, couldn't really. Arousing is bonkers, isn't she? And uh, maybe Catwa with Frankie Dottori on board. He's only got two rides on the card. He's riding a 21 chance, 20 to 1 chance for Michael Appleby. So maybe that'd be one she might sneak into the frame. There you go. Uh, unless he's out for a, for a day out as well at well, uh, Newcastle on a Friday be. night. Who knows? Who knows? Uh, okay, Catwa is uh, 20 to 1. The graphics have come back up, but there's a, a box of batteries in the way. <laughs> it's, it's, all, it's all going, all going beautifully. Uh, what wins the, uh, the Phillies of Mare's Keels? Uh, yeah, I'm in, I'm in the Highfield Princess camp. Okay, very well. Uh, I'm in the International Angel camp. That's one vote for each, Tom. Yeah, I'm with you, Ross, but only marginally. Okay, there you go. Yeah, we, I mean, it'd be it'd be, uh, be a real change of habits if you were firmly in the same camp as me, Tom. So you don't want to <laughs> you don't want to get carried away, do you? No, uh, I'm going to take it steady. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, and uh, and Simon? Yeah, international angel for me. That's three from four. Three votes for international angel. One for high football. There we go. Just how Keels likes it, uh, up against everyone else. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, I'm swimming against the tide with a fucking late fav. What's all that about? <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. That's, uh, that never happens, does it? <laughs> it's because it's not a 20 run handicap chase, so you've, uh, you, don't, you don't know what to do. Um, two more to, to look at then at Newcastle on, uh, on Friday. Uh, moving on to the 4.15, uh, we uh, have a very different proposition in, uh, uh, in this uh, all weather marathon championships. Uh, 12 runners, though, big fields, uh, all lining up for a prize of 77,300. And ten pounds. Uh, Sleeping Lion is three to one favourite. Earl of the Cotswold nine to two. Rainbow Dreamer five to one. Marshall Plan thirteen to two. Uh, Nate the Great is uh, uh, eleven to one. And Grandmaster Flash uh, is twelve to one. Yep, there we go. And uh, bigger prices the rest here for this uh, this two mile race. And we've got some. Oh, we've got some old favourites in here, haven't we? Earl of the Cotswolds, Rainbow Dreamer, Sleeping Lion. Uh, uh, the lineup for this time is making us look like spring chickens. <laughs> Speak for yourself. Blimey, I'm in the 50s. Uh, Grandmaster Flash, I thought, had a chance. We've put on the old uh, pop music uh, theme, Jamiroquai theme from a minute ago. I thought he was going to run well. I'm not sure he's, he would be my selection, but I thought he was quite a big price for Joseph O'Brien. I think he's, he's going to run well. I quite like the two at the top, boringly. I quite like Sleeping Lion, who I thought was really impressive at Kempton last time. And my old pal, Earl of the Cotswolds, who ran uh, at the start of the season, I thought I was being really clever in a jumps race and backing and Sam off a mark in that low 120s with a with Isabel Williams taking five off. I thought he was an absolute certainty to win a handicap hurdle at Newbury one day. And Earl of the Cotswolds cantered all over him and went past him like he was standing still up the, the home straight. And I thought this has to be a really good horse. Now, clearly ground was an issue next time. And he's come back on the all weather and he's been really impressive. He's a really strong traveller and a really good horse. So he's got a bit to find with Sleeping Lion on that that previous run but I think he's improving so while I like Grandmaster Flash a bit at the prices and we'll have a few quid on each way I think it's probably between the top two uh marginally prefer Sleeping Lion just because of the uh just because he had the uh he beat Earl of the Cotswolds last time but I wouldn't be surprised if this was a Nigel Twiston Davis winner on the all-weather you don't get many of those for the pound that's for sure no, no, you do not. Uh, I'm trying to think, uh, apart from all the Cotswolds, what are the ones you, you would have got? Um, I think Paddy's motorbike won some uh, races on the turf, uh, maybe, maybe even the all weather. Let's have a quick look. Paddy's motorbike. Oh, yeah, uh, there I we think go. He's won that two mile five race at Goodwood. I mean, that's not the all weather, but he has won some flat staying races. Yeah. Think, but, you know, so. Mad Moose, he, uh, he, he won on the uh, Yeah, well, you know, think about it. You know, if, you were, if you're thinking, right, I'm looking forward to the, the all weather championship, I wonder who's going to win the staying event. Nobody would have had a Earl of Cotswolds on their minds, <laughs> would they? Because he made no. his flat debut in January yeah. at the age of eight. 
Uh, and yeah, I think, you know, he's got beaten by Rainbow Dreamer, he's got beaten by Sleeping Lion, but they're his first two starts at a new discipline, and he's just really started to relish it, isn't he? He's absolutely hacked up the last two times. So yeah, I'm 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 in his camp as well. I think he's gonna I think he's gonna go very close. And he, like you said, he is a strong traveller. He's always had a bit of speed about him. Yeah, and he's gonna have that. Uh, yeah. I mean, the, the the way he won at Newbury, he's got a mm. huge long straight as well at Newcastle, yeah, exactly, hasn't he? Yeah. Which will suit him down yeah. to the ground. Yeah, I think it will. Yeah. And he uh, and he beats uh, I mean, again, like you said, when he beat Glory and Fortune mm. into it's a fourth at Newbury. Uh, down the field was Dorking Boy, he bolted up last night. At yeah, Kempton. exactly. He's got some decent form to his name. He's obviously, you know, you know, it must have surprised them that he can turn into a hundred rated flat performer. But I mean, he just is a very useful horse, isn't he? Yeah, uh, yeah. I would have loved to have. Uh, I would love to be in the uh, in the meeting with the owners, Tom, where they went. You know what? Let, let's go on the all weather. <laughs> well, it's uh, Kempton Road. It's Willie Twiston Davis owns a bit, doesn't he? And he's 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 quite on, Willie's on the ball, and he he was the one that suggested that they go back to the all weather because he travels so well and clearly doesn't like soft ground. And they were, you know, sort of thinking, what do they do with a horse that you know in such good form? But every time we run him on the on the on the on the over jumps on soft ground, he gets lapped. So there's there's obviously hatched this plan and it's clearly worked out better than anyone's expecting. He, he's he, you know he's a really good horse. Sleeping Lion's pretty good too, but I think uh, you know. Earlier in the week, when Earl's the Cotswolds was a bigger price, I think Keels has probably spoiled that a bit, but uh, I thought he was a good bet. Now it's getting closer. I'm sort of leaning towards Sleeping Lion because I was impressed with him last time. The Charlton, Hor Charlton horses are running well. I read somewhere today that they think they're two weeks further forward than they've ever been before, and they're in really good form. He had a winner at Newmarket today. So, you know, they're getting towards, no, they're not quite the same price, but they're, they're not too far off now as they would have been bigger. There was a bigger disparity earlier in the week. So I'm slightly edging towards Sleeping Lion, but. I'd love all the Cotswolds to win. What a great story that would be. That would be the story of the day for me. Yeah, to be fair, just looking at his form, uh, they did run in a jumper's bumper last February, um, which obviously must have been because of the uh, uh, the weather, and then probably thought, oh, hang on a minute, <laughs> he's, uh, he's yeah. really enjoyed this. Um, but, uh, yeah, like I said, that Newbury form, uh, would not have expected it to uh, to turn up here. Uh, I must have a quick mention for, for Marshall Plan, because I don't know about you, Tom, i would kind of forgotten... Uh, you forget about all those horses on the flat, in the flat season that you follow, apart from Mondemesh, of course, uh, and bang your head against uh, uh, unlucky rides or beating on the line and all that kind of jazz. We had another one, we had one on Monday, a horse called Equality, a sprinter, who I, uh, when he would on the all-weather, broke his maiden. I said, oh, this is a, a top-class sprinter, refused to settle all last season on a nightmare and then bolted up on Monday. Uh, and there's all these horses that you've probably backed three or four times uh, coming back and uh, reminded me of painful... Uh, memories from last season. And Marshall Plan, I have followed this horse off an absolute cliff. Um, should I have another go? Oh, blimey. He was a massive eye catcher at Royal Ascot, wasn't he? And then he came, was it here? Was it on the all weather? Was it at Newcastle? Mm, and yeah. they passed the boards. And I thought he was an absolute certainty in one of those uh, racing league races. And he just didn't get the job done. And he hasn't got the job done ever since. But what you would say about him is that. John Gosden and Godolphin have, uh, you know, kept hold of him. You wouldn't expect them to keep hold of a horse like this if they didn't think there was something there. Mm. I wouldn't give up on him. There's got to be they, the, the Gossies has obviously obviously seen something. And what he and what he showed at Royal Ascot that day, he's clearly got races in him. Uh, maybe first time out's time to get him. So no, I wouldn't give up on him, Ross. Okay, very really well. Uh, still a colt, remarkably as well. Not uh, yeah. entirely sure what uh, that one's uh, was all about. Uh, but uh, sleeping lion three to one. Earl of the Cotswolds, though Simon Clare, getting a lot of love in the studio. Uh, Nigel Twist and Davies. Yeah, he is. And listen, I, I I know this horse well. He um he's owned by Dan Greer and Chris Kiley, as well as Willie Twist and Davies and Jed Mason. And and they used to be tra they used to be coral traders, Chris Kiley and Dan Greer. Um, and they owned, they met Willie Tristan Davies out in Vegas. I mean, they were out on the stag. He was out there. It's completely fortuitous. And they're good guys, Dan and Chris. Chris is uh, Dean Kiley's son. Remember Dean Kiley, the goalkeeper who played for West Brom, etc. Mm -hmm. Um anyway, they um and so I and I was there at Newbury when they won that handicap hurdle. On that day, they were talking about going uh, for the All Weather Series Championship. So this was a plan hatched back in November that they were going to then go onto the all weather and, and and have a tilt at this and here they are and he's you know he's an amazing horse he's won ten of his twenty nine starts he's not been well backed I think he's got a great chance he just he's just one of those horses who just loves to win loves to run loves to win I think he's you know I think Sleeping Lions are a, a good horse as well but I can see why the money's coming for Earl of the Cotswolds and uh, yeah I've got a I've got a sort of a, an emotional attachment to him but I've also I also think he's got a really good form chance he'd definitely be the one for me. 
Okay. Uh, shout out to a couple of selections uh, at, at home. Uh, one smooth operator each way for Ponty Terrier. Uh, Nate the Great for Sharp Fitness Look. And also not, uh, Nate the Great for Kieran Catterson, who says very game to outstay one smooth operator for course and distance last time out. Two pound more here. Uh, and if he's in the same mood, he will have a big each way chance. Andrew Balding has won this race twice uh, in the, uh, the past. So a, uh, an open looking marathon championship. Uh, Paul Keeley, uh, what wins the marathon? Uh, the Cotswolds, hopefully. Uh, the Cotswolds, uh, there we go. Uh, Tom, what wins the uh, the marathon for you? Well, I want Earl of the Cotswolds to win, and I'm, I have had a few quid on him. I fear Sleeping Lion greatly. We've got to mention Rainbow Dreamer, haven't we? Mm. He's got such a good record on the track. He was disappointing last time, but I've, you know, if he bounces back under Holly Dole, he's got a chance too. Uh, Marshall Plan thrown in there. I think it's really hard. I've had a few quid on Earl of the Cotswolds. I'm tempted to have a few on Sleeping Lion now because I think he's. I think just watching that race back last time, I think he looked like an improved boss. Okay, very well. Uh, and I will uh, continue to follow Marshall Plan off a cliff, uh, and uh, and hopefully uh, will uh, not be dashed on the rocks. Simon Clare. Yeah, should point out four places, not three in this race. So well worth uh, having an each way flutter. Um, and the, the In The Know special is a price boost on either uh, Alan King or Nigel Tristan Davies to win this race. It's 11 to 4 from 2 to 1. If you add the price of Earl of the Cotswolds and Rainbow Dream, I think it works out about a 2 to 1 chance. So if you want to have uh, each of them uh, in a joint play, 11 to 4 is the In The Know special. But for me, it's definitely Earl of the Cotswolds. OK, and if I told you uh, that the In The Know special was Nigel Twisson Davies or Alan King to train the winner of a race, and you guessed the all weather marathon stakes, uh, <laughs> uh, you'd have been a better man than I, that's for sure. But uh, one more race to, uh, to look at at uh, Newcastle then, and again, very different proposition here in the, uh, uh, in theory, the banker of the day in the, the 4.45, the, the middle distance championships condition stakes. Uh, worth £103,080, just uh, lumped on an extra uh, 25 grand to the winner here. Um, uh, not that it's going to make much difference to, uh, to the turnout because uh, a lot of horses running scared of Terranian Sea, who's 4-6, to six, Living Legend 5-1, to one, United Front 7-1, Al Zarakan is 9-1, to one, Felix is 12s with Charles Quint as well. Uh, another French raider here. Uh, but, uh, Tom, I'll come to you uh, for this one because... Well, I mean, uh, eye catchers uh, are one thing. Um, I don't know about your uh, two for the tracker column, but um, Torini and C would have been way too obvious uh, at uh, Kempton last time out. They went an absolute crawl in that event, and, uh, and Jack Mitchell basically um, stood behind a wall of horses thinking, God, it'd be nice if I got a gap. Yeah, clearly, clearly he was an eye catcher, I have to admit. He, and very, very, very rarely would I put an on all weather horse in the in the trackers column because I don't watch that. I wouldn't be taking as much notice of all weather racing as as normal racing. But yes, he was clearly a huge eye catcher, and this isn't a great race, is it? You know, for the money. In fact, it's quite embarrassing, really. I think for a hundred grand. But uh, he's 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 got he's an outstanding chance. Uh, the one slight query I've got is stamina because he's by Dark Angel. That was his first try at a mile and a quarter, I think, last time. This is a stiffer track than, uh, than, than Kempton. Now, he clearly, clearly would have won, I, thought, I think, last time. But if they go, you know, there's a quite a lot of, pay, you know, quite a lot of strong stayers in this. Felix stays well. Alzaraquan stays well. Lightning Legend's going to probably serve it up from the front, isn't he, under Mark Johnson? So that's the only thing I'm negative I've got against him. I think he's probably going to win. But would I back him at four to six? I don't think I would. No, no. In fact, I definitely wouldn't. No. Yeah, like you said, um, because uh, it was a crawl at Kempton as well, wasn't it, last time out? So um, we still don't quite know whether his, uh, his stamina is going to last out. I mean, he bolted up over a mile here. It's only it's only a couple of furlongs, uh, of course. We shouldn't be too surprised by the, uh, the turnout, um, Keels, as they, they've put a lot of money down here, but the winter derby barely gets any runners. Where, where, are, all the, uh, where are all the 10 furlong horses? Uh, Australia, Hong Kong, yeah, yeah, etc. Yeah. Et yeah. John Gosman said, we're a nursery for the rest of the world now when it comes to... Uh, it comes to racing, and something will run well here, and we probably won't see that again either. Uh, you know, so um, we'll see. I mean, Tohany and Seed's got obviously big owners anyway, so I mean, they'll, they'll run wherever they want to run. Uh, yeah, he's, you know, again, he's another horse that, you know, in a handicap, we've been getting weight off quite a few of these, uh, but it almost certainly wouldn't have been the case had he got that clear run that he, that he didn't get at Kempton last time. But would I jump on him at 4 6? No, in a million years. No, you know what I mean? I don't think he's, he's that clear cut a favourite at all. 
Um, might win, um, probably will. Uh, if you forgive Felix his last run last time, he's got some crack and all weather form to his name. He has got to bounce back, but he didn't run that badly in Dubai the time before. So uh, at a double figure price, I'd, you know, if I was going to have a bet, it'd be a very small one on him. Mm. Uh, I mean, he was another one though. Um, who, as soon as you play the replay back, uh, you go right three wide, bang, put a line yeah, through that. Yeah, bank. exactly. Yeah, it, it, it was all. It, it, it all went wrong for him. I mean, you know, he's another one that that doesn't always run really, really well. Mm -hmm. uh, you know what I mean? He doesn't win that often. But you know, uh, I you know I have backed him a few times. Put it that way. He's a bit of a cliff horse. Um, but I think twelve to one is way understating his case, especially in relation to the rest. Mm. Yeah, he was about £5 pound higher, uh, rated about 110 in the, the, the high summer as well. Uh, and I wouldn't entirely rule out Al Zarakhan for any big race either. Um, this horse is, they can't quite decide what to do tactically with this horse. They sometimes go off in front uh, and occasionally they, uh, they hold him up. But um, he would have won it another half a stride at Kempton last time out. Uh, and again, he's another one. Uh, who uh, could well have a little bit more to offer at the age of five, but uh, yeah, um, it'll be a uh, it'll be a bad Friday if uh, Terranian Sea goes in at uh, four forty-five uh, for the uh, uh, for the coral traders, uh, Simon. I imagine <laughs> this one will be in uh, doubles and trebles and fourfolds all across the card. Yeah, and it probably depends almost what, what happens to some of the other favourites on the card, the likes of um, My Oberon and uh, Imperial Fight in the first, you know, sort of the shorter ones on the card. Because you could see running up money onto him. He has been nibbled at. He's, he was eight to eleven early. He's now four to six. Everything's sort of pointing towards him being sort of almost, uh, you know, underpriced almost as people just sort of bank on him. But a bit of money for Al Zarakhan. He's nine to one from ten to one in the last hour or so. Um, tricky race to have a confident bet on. I just thought Living Legend hasn't run on the track before. He's been running at tracks like Link, Linkfield and Kempton, um, where he won last time. Obviously at Kempton. Thought maybe Joe Fanning from the front tactical if he can get a soft leak and then sort of wind up he stays well stiffer stiffer all weather surface i thought he might be the one i'd, I'd you know be most likely to bet on to beat the favor but it's a hard race to have a, a confident uh, punt on i would have thought okay fairly well uh but uh how are we uh, are we playing the finale keels uh tiny bit on felix yeah to beat the favor. okay a little bit on felix for uh, for keels tom uh, I won't be playing in it. I'll be nervously watching the rating score at about this time. But uh, <laughs> I think Iranian Sea will probably win. And the danger, I'm, it's one of the, I would, you know, one or three. Alex Arakan or Felix probably. Okay, and uh, you'll be uh, you'll be down in the final can, I reckon, uh, at uh, this time, Simon. But uh, what, win <laughs> what wins the finale? Yeah, I've got about a three-hour wait then for my flight back from uh, Newcastle Airport. So, so yeah, I'll have to get stuck in but uh, yeah no living legend small bet just for sport to beat the favorite okay very well and i'll give al zarakan a chance as well and we'll all watch the terrain and see bolts up by half the track uh okay uh, good friday then all weather action at uh, newcastle and at linkfield and uh, uh, and chelmsford as well coral also sponsored a couple over at uh, linkfield there's a good cards uh, uh, there who uh, obviously traditionally uh, uh, do the, the All Weather Championships on Good Friday as well. But we're off to Newcastle uh, for the first time, uh, 10 years since the inception of the All Weather Championships. So let's see if we can land a few naps in the North East. Uh, one of those will be had by Simon Clare on the flight back, and hopefully we'll have <laughs> a few winners by then. Paul Keeley, what's the nap on Good Friday? Uh, yeah, nap for me is Edgelab in the sprint. And he might nick it from the front on that rail. OK, very well. Uh, Edgelab uh, down the, uh, the rail in the, uh, the sprint then. Tom? Well, I can't go in that race now because Keels has uh, nicked it. So I'm off to, if I'm allowed, I'm off to Lingfield and I'm going to go for one that I think Keels might be on in about 20 minutes on a session. Oh. <laughs> no, play golf, to, play golf tomorrow, mate. We're going to have a nice, uh, nice quiet night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, and the all weather Vars uh, and the va va mile handicap at uh, Lingfield on a session number three for the Barons. They're in tremendous. <laughs> I think he's going to get he's going to get a strong pace to run at. So he's my he's my fancy main fancy of the day on a session uh, at Lingfield. Okay, very well. Uh, I will go with International Angel in the the Phillies and Mares then for Jane Chapelheim and uh, and Holly Doyle to bounce back from that uh, that poor draw last time out at Wolverhampton. Uh, Simon, yeah, to land a long range plan, Earl of the Cotswolds. Very well. Oh, the Cotswolds it is. Uh, that brings to an end to the, uh, the, uh, the show. Uh, Good Friday uh, is uh, on the agenda, of course. Uh, we've also got uh, uh, potential uh, classic clues at Newbury on Saturday. We've got Fairy House coming up as well. Uh, we've still got Puncher's Town. We've got all sorts going on, isn't it? With the, uh, the spring is here, uh, and hopefully there's a spring in your step on Good Friday as well. Uh, best of luck in the racing. Uh, we'll be back uh, next week, I do believe, as well. Uh, so uh, have a good weekend. Enjoy your Easter. 
and we'll see you next time.